Just when the Montecito mansion seemed to have quieted down, Megan makes a grand entrance with her latest endeavor, a Netflix series extolling the virtues of cooking, gardening, and, wait for it, friendship. But how can someone who's notorious for cutting ties lecture us on friendship? Megan's track record speaks volumes. She shed most of her pre-hairy pals, along with her entire family, save for her mother Doria. And let's not forget how she lured Harry away from his old circle of friends. Her reputation for markling, disposing of people when they're no longer useful, precedes her, earning its place in the Urban Dictionary. A quick glance at Megan's friendship history reveals a pattern of markling. From distancing herself from Suits co-stars to parting ways with longtime friend Jessica Maroney over a white privilege debate, Megan's friendships seem to have an expiration date. Even her bond with Violet Von Wessenholz, once close, cooled off. And let's not overlook how she markled the royal family, rejecting Kate's initial hand of friendship. It's ironic that someone who champions feminism now sounds like a domestic goddess, donning her marigolds. But it's Megan's claim to friendship expertise that truly irks. She wouldn't know how to keep a friend if her life depended on it. Caroline Flack's untimely demise continues to haunt us, with her mother Christine's quest to reopen the police investigation into her daughter's arrest and subsequent suicide. But can we truly fault the cops for Caroline's tragic end? Caroline battled demons of her own, with a history of suicide attempts and alleged drug abuse. She was a remarkable but troubled soul who ultimately chose to end her life. Blaming law enforcement seems misplaced in the face of such profound personal struggles. Russ Cook's epic journey across Africa may be poised for the silver screen, but let's not forget Tom Hanks's iconic portrayal in Forrest Gump. With nearly $700 million in global box office earnings, Hanks has already set the movie race in motion. ITV's This Morning sees a resurgence with Kat Dealey and Ben Shepard at the helm. Viewing figures are up a testament to the stellar behind-the-scenes team that kept the ship afloat amidst Schofield's exit and Holly's departure. Ollie Davis's tragic fate at the hands of his father underscores the need for accountability. While Michael Davis faces a life sentence for his heinous crimes, Kaylee Driver's seven-year sentence for allowing the death of a child feels inadequate. Any mother complicit in such atrocities deserves equal punishment. Former Post Office Managing Director David Smith's belated apology for Seema Mishra's wrongful imprisonment rings hollow. His attempt to distance himself from the fallout, penned by a shrewd lawyer, falls short of genuine remorse. Let's hope justice prevails for Mishra and all those wronged by former Post Office bosses. Leo Woodall's rumored role in the next Bridget Jones movie sparks intrigue. Will he play Renee Zellweger's son or her love interest? Regardless, the prospect of a middle-aged Bridget frolicking with a younger beau promises entertainment galore. Aintree's Ladies' Day dazzles with sartorial splendor. Among the contenders for best dressed, one lady stands out in resplendent royal blue, a deserving winner of the coveted prize. Suki Waterhouse's postpartum snapshot may paint a rosy picture, but let's not forget the harsh realities of childbirth. While celebrities vie for attention with their candid glimpses into motherhood, let's hope they draw the line at live birthing broadcasts. Liz Truss's recounting of the late Queen's advice serves as a sobering reminder of the challenges ahead. As Liz braces herself for the political fray, Rishi Sunak learns the perils of association with his beloved Adidas Samba trainers falling out of favor. Sheridan Smith's West End comeback may have met an untimely end, but her brilliance on stage remains undisputed. Despite the play's premature closure, Sheridan's performance shines through, a testament to her unparalleled talent.